The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN Wednesday morning, 9.06 a.m. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading and markets in higher territory, but pulling back a bit from the highs we had just this morning. You see the acceleration up to 47.12 at about 6.45 a.m. this morning. Uh, news coming out that it looks like Pfizer and BioNTech saying their booster provides high level of protection against the Omicron in initial lab study. There's a little bit of an acceleration. You could argue that a lot of that already may be potentially built in. Quite the run we had the last couple days in terms of fears of the new variant subsiding. You go from a low of 45.31, and as I just told you, we just reached 47.12. 47.12 from 45.31, you're talking about 180 S&P points from where we were just Monday morning, remarkable, and you're talking about within about 30 points. That's within about 1%, folks, of all-time highs on the S&P. NASDAQ 100, tech stocks, quite a day higher yesterday. You had the NASDAQ up 3%. NASDAQ, you're talking about Monday's action. How about 800 points almost in the NASDAQ from a low of 15,005? 59. We're trading right now at 16,323. The Dow is positive by 34 points right now. Dow within about 700 points of all time highs in the Russell, positive by seven. Russell with some volatility. You talk about a pullback from 2460 down to the lows of about 2143. So you're talking about 320 points from the lows. Uh, and we're right back in the middle of this consolidation. The Russell had been in for the better part of 2021. Crude oil. We'll be talking to our man Teddy Kegstad from forex-trading-unlock.com at 40 past the hour. We'll be talking a little bit of forex. We'll be talking a little bit of crude. Crude, quite the acceleration off the lows we had last week. Over the last six days, you've seen crude trade up basically $10 from 62.43. Today, we reach a high of 72.79. We've pulled back a bit, but crude with a 71 handle right now. You got gold off $2 at 17.82. Uh, gold, quite the acceleration in November, up to 1880. We've just been chopping around with all the volatility in the market. Look at this calmness that we've had in the gold contract with very little volatility indeed. And no tin bonds, we jump over the 10 year, a little bit of lower price and higher yield. We jump over to the yield right now. You're talking about 1.5%. We were about 1.46 yesterday. We're sitting right at 1.5%, the yield on the 10 year. Uh, the price action, negative by four ticks at 130.06 and we jump over to the volatility index sucking out that volatility in the market we're at 21.90 uh next stop looks to be about 20 bucks at least closing this gap 2096 is where that gap would get closed and that is the gap that we saw from wednesday prior to thanksgiving to the friday where you had that huge sell off beginning of the half day of action on friday following thanksgiving uh, we've been stuck above 22 basically since that time. Today, maybe it's the day we get out of that price level with the VIX subsiding and continuing that action. All right, jumping around to what else we have going on. We'll start it off with vaccine optimism. So that is the headline there. And when you jump over, Pfizer, BioNTech say booster dose needed to fight Omicron, but that it is effective. Initial lab studies showed a third dose of their vaccine may be needed to neutralize the Omicron variant results that will accelerate booster shot drives around the world. Uh, that's a 25 fold reduction in neutralizing antibody levels versus the variant compared with the original strain. This is what we're seeing. It looks like it definitely is something that's more contagious. But the good news is. It seems like it's a milder case, and it seems like the vaccines do work. Maybe the booster is necessary. Uh, however, boosting with an additional shot of the vaccine raised antibodies 25-fold against Omicron, giving a similar level of protective proteins as, as observed against those earlier versions after the standard two doses. Uh, they indicate that two doses of the vaccine may not be sufficient. I mean, that's kind of what we had seen, folks. This is an ever-evolving science. Uh, I've gotten my booster. I encourage you, if you're on the fence, go out there, talk to your medical professional. Um, 
because they are safe, they are effective, and we're seeing it happen right now in live action uh, with the market getting a little bit ahead of itself on this sell-off post-Thanksgiving. But, man, they've gotten it all back. We're trading at 46.89. Now, the S&P is taking a look at this chart we've had. You back it up even further. Really remarkable that we are staying within this trend line. Uh, from the lows of COVID, I was talking about this yesterday, and it's definitely an art, not a science, folks. All right. You could try and take the lows off of the COVID low we had in March of 2174. But if you line up where this thing took off from basically in April, if you take the action under 2500 out of there, maybe that was a little bit of an exacerbated low. Because remember, just zooming in on that low. The moves we were having in the S&P at this time, remarkable. All right, we had a move on March 24th of 217 points from low to high. And we almost opened at the low and closed at the high. We opened within three points of the low. We closed within three, uh, five points of the high, five and 5.5 points almost. What is it? The high is, let me get that. The high is 2447. The close is 2442.50, 5.25. You have a 200 and, got to get this right, it's just big numbers, 217 point bar. Yeah, and we opened within a few points of the open, uh, and we closed basically within about five points of the high. So remarkable action. You take that out of the equation, though, maybe those few days where we really shouldn't have been below 2400 because, I mean, it's not like we knew much in March 24th. The, the market just kind of said, hey, hold on. You know, this isn't going to be the end of everything, and you trade it up. I mean, that's almost a 10% pop, folks. S&Ps were trading at 2,200, and we had a bar that was 217 points. I have to keep looking at the numbers because they're so big. I think I'm making mistakes. So with that in context, if you take the trend line, not incorporating that, it lines up pretty well to the lows and the highs, maybe a little bit of a linear regression. But, man, this thing just bounced right off the bottom. And if we're on the way to the top, you're talking about 4875. That's right now. But if, as we go into the future, you're talking about maybe 4900 as time progresses a little bit across the board there. All right. And that's a good segue to J.P. Morgan. Uh, Carl Quintanilla, he's got some good tweets out there recently. I'm going to pull up a couple that I found on his tweet uh, feed this morning. Um, J.P. Morgan, though. This morning, talking about 2022 will be the year of full global recovery, an end of the pandemic, a return to normal economic and market conditions, and they put a price tag of the S&P of 50-50. Not bad, folks. Not bad, indeed. Uh, back this up on a three-year weekly, 50-50. I mean, just to put it on this chart where we are, that's quite a remarkable acceleration even from here. You're talking about a solid 400 or so points in this index. That would be, what, an 8 or 9% move for 2020, combining the final month of 2021. All things considered, I think a lot of market participants would take an 8 or 9% return in the S&P right now following the few years we've had in the you know 20 25 percent gains. It just cannot be that way going forward, folks. There has to be some recoil on the market. 20 to 25 percent gains on a consistent basis just is too much money. It just is not how things work, folks, across the board. Yes, certain companies can rise at that level. The entire economy rising at that level, not quite how things usually work. You just have to go back to history to see how these charts oscillate. Um, but man, JP Morgan out there with some strong recommendations. And fundamentally, I would somewhat agree. I mean, I would say that life is getting back to normal. Uh, we're going to have these flare-ups of variant concerns until we really get the whole population of the globe vaccinated to calm down the number of cases that are allowing these variants. We're going to have some flip-outs, I'm sure, in the market when it comes time for stimulus fading away and tapering. That would be the real concern. Uh, stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll be talking to our man Kevin Hinks from Fast Market TD Ameritrade Network. We'll be right back. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today.
tfnn.com, educating investors. What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Welcome back, folks. We get the S&Ps right now, positive by four points. All the indices in the green with the NASDAQ 100 up by nine, Dow up by 25. Bitcoin shares, Bitcoin shares, Bitcoin itself, I guess you call it, uh, negative 800 bucks, just under 50,000. Bitcoin with some volatile action in a big way. Bitcoin yesterday, we had a price action all the way up to 52,150. So it seems like a couple of thousand dollars on Bitcoin, just par for the course these days. All right, folks, let's jump over to our man, Kevin Hinks. Every trading day, 12 noon Eastern time, fast market from the TD Ameritrade Network. Kevin Hinks, Tom White, and the team breaking down the day's market action, walking you through hypothetical trade setups, folks, in the option market, talking about Delta, talking about Theta, talking about defined risk. Kevin Hinks, good morning. Good morning, Tommy O'Brien. Yep, you know, I think we've got a market here that is, you know, has has run quite away in the last couple of days, and we'll see if it's got any more legs. Good news this morning out of Pfizer. On, um, it looks like the combination of two vaccines and a booster will work against the Omicron variant. That's real good news. I think you've got breaking news out of Roku, and they're cutting a the deal with Google. I think that's, that, that's got that stock up about, oh, $16, $17 the last time I looked. And uh, you've got kind of a lead-in to the CPI data that's coming up on Friday, Tommy. And but besides that, not a lot of data to really get in the way of this market right now, Tommy. Uh, so can it run into Friday's number? Very possibly, yes. Yeah, pretty remarkable, Kevin. And I think on that Pfizer news this morning, you saw the S&Ps, even I got the chart here up on the Thinkorswim platform uh, on a five-minute basis, jumps to 47.12 at about 6.45, 7 in this morning. But then it just gives back that 20 or so points, Kevin, probably what you're talking about, a lot of this built in. Remarkable that it was only, I just had to pull it up, Kevin, 12 days ago, uh, was the Friday after Thanksgiving. I think to myself then, right, the worst of the worst was kind of... Uh, cascading through the market of fears of the the mutations in the spike protein and, and vaccines not even working and within 12 days we have the market back sitting within one percent in the s p of all-time highs and we have news out there at least from the companies themselves saying that uh pretty robust protection with the booster especially and i saw that roku news as well man and i like that because i watch youtube on my roku folks i watch tiger tv on my youtube channel on my roku if you don't check it out it's a great deal so i was excited to see that and roku is up about 16 bucks uh so kevin we look 
really for Friday, I think, in my head, I'm looking for CPI, all the rage. I mean, we just had, you could call it a variant scare in the market. But I see the Fed as being the real catalyst as we go forward. Uh, JP Morgan out there with no fear at all today, talking about maybe 5,050 for next year as we get over COVID. Uh, what do you look for for that Friday number as we come into it now, basically back at all time highs right now, Kevin? Yeah, well, Tommy, the expectations for Friday's number are fairly muted in terms of um, what last month's number was. It was 0.9. This one's looking 0.7. The excluding energy was up 0.6. This is looking up 0.5. So if those numbers come in like that, that would be, you know, less acceleration in, uh, in inflation. And I think the market would like that. So, yeah, I, I think you look at the consensus, you look at what they were a month ago, and CPI is such an important part of the inflation narrative. So this number uh, coming up on Friday, yeah, don't discount it. It's a big one, Tommy. Yeah, it'll be pretty cool, man. And I think over the course of... And we've been saying it for a long time, Kevin. It's like every month we go forward, these data points are so important as Chairman Powell is going to have quite a task ahead of himself as we taper, uh, as we deal with possible inflationary tendencies. But it will be interesting over the next you know, six months or even year how these play out because of the volatility, I think, that might be in this market. I was talking about my to my subscribers yesterday, Kevin, saying it's a two-way market, if anything, which is pretty cool as a trader right now that you're going to have volatility in this market because of just some of what you talk about. I mean, there's so much unknown, Kevin. We're waiting for a CPI data in a normal world without a pandemic. CPIs can't vary as much as we've seen right now. But as a trader, I think it really provides the volatility that we were missing for so long when the market was just at a VIX that seemed normal at 12 or 13, Kevin, quite a far cry from where we are right now. Uh, with that in mind, you mentioned it. We got some earnings coming out still. Uh, man, some, some big numbers. In terms of misses, Stitch Fix, they're down pretty dramatically today. Uh, Campbell's Soup was a little bit higher on their numbers. Uh, we do have some for the week. Are you guys going to be talking about any equities coming up at 12 noon today? Sure. Well, uh, like Folio, a day ahead of time, uh, they're going to talk about Lululemon. That'll be a huge nice. presentation that, that, that they do because Thursday's so piled with good names. And then we'll trade... RH, Restoration Hardware, today. Oof. And then uh, I'm, we're kind of thinking about that last one. We're going to try to make it as timely as possible. So we may trade some Roku today based on their uh, Google Alphabet news. Nice. And, yeah, talk about some two powerful stocks, man. Lululemon, uh, just remarkable how they've transformed that athleisure industry completely. It seems like that stock just does not stop hitting 485 just recently. And Restoration Hard, man, man um, quite the story in terms of their acceleration in 2020. I got the chart up here. I had a trend line that it was in, Kevin, from March of 2020 called the COVID lows. Almost takes it all the way up to the high we saw in August. But, man, they've had a little bit of a pullback, back to about 500 and change, 576 from 744. Uh, those those stores, Restoration Hardware, man, they have a beautiful one in International Plaza. I'll tell you real quick, Kevin. And they put one in. I hadn't been there in a while. This is a couple years ago now. I go to International Plaza. I said, did they just put a Hilton in the middle of International Plaza? It looked like a hotel. The thing was so big, Kevin. Then I found out, no, no, that's just a store that sells goods for your home. I said, oh, my goodness, check out that thing. And that was a couple years ago. Uh, Tommy, well, Kevin, they just built one a mile from my house. And it is. The curb appeal on these buildings is spectacular. I, I, I'm not lying, folks. I thought it was a Hilton Hotel I could because it popped. In a, and this is a beautiful mall, Kevin, International Plaza in Tampa. Um, you know, as in there's a lot of things that pop in that place, but they popped especially uh, a two-story giant. And, yeah, so they, they've they they've come in and, and talk about being in the right place at the right time as people try and take care of their homes, spruce it up, uh, talk about being high-end at the right time as well. Well, Kevin, we appreciate the conversation, man. We'll be watching at noon Eastern time today. Lululemon, Restoration Hardware, and we'll look for that third stock as well, man. You have a great day. Thanks for having me on, Tommy. Have a great day. Always a pleasure, Kevin. You too. Folks, tune in 12 noon Eastern time. You heard it. They'll have a great presentation from Like Folio at uh, talking about Lululemon. And they do an outstanding job, folks, talking about consumer sentiment out there. And there's so much data. That's the coolest part. There's so much data out in the world right now. When you talk about social sentiment, uh, they do a great job of kind of corralling that all, 
giving you the presentation for Lululemon and seeing how that might impact as they come out with their numbers uh, on Thursday, I believe this week. Jumping over to Lululemon on the Thinkorswim platform, we jump over to the Analyze tab. They have an old earnings tab underneath there, and there it is, December 9th. They'll be out with their numbers tomorrow. The market right now pricing in a one-day market maker expected move of almost $29 for a $434 stock. Now you jump over, so you got $29 for the move tied to earnings the weekly number with exposure through friday you're talking about a 36 dollar move quite a move for a 434 dollar stock for lululemon out uh, with their numbers let's jump over to restoration restoration hardware there's some moves for you as well now they're out with their numbers today jumping over it's almost a 10 percent move priced into the numbers folks that is a decent number if you're looking to absorb some premium uh i might have to take a look at that stock for my newsletter because anytime you see a 10 percent move priced into an equity folks um, I say maybe there's some premium up there to absorb. If you don't think it's going to have that type of volatility around earnings, that's why you should listen to Fast Market. Coming up at 12 noon Eastern time today, folks, as they break it down with Kevin, Tom White, the whole team. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back for the open. Are you having fun trading the markets but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
All right, folks, we got markets open. We got the S&P right now positive by five points, trading at 46.90. NASDAQ 100 slightly in the red by about five points. The Dow right now up 57 and the Russell up by six. Checking in on some of the stocks. Yeah, so Roku, look at that acceleration from 215 to 237. You're up 9.6 percent. Strong stock, but man, quite a pullback recently. Check that out. Too high, just shy of the 500 region. And just like that, we give almost it all back, back to 2019 prices almost, folks. You were trading at 176 in 2019. I believe we got under 200. Yes, we did to 196 yesterday's action. Last week got down to 199. You're catching a bit there. Has to do with a multi year agreement. So not just a short term, multi year agreement. Looks like Roku is well aware that Google, YouTube was one thing they had to have. And I would agree. I watch a lot of YouTube. I got kids in the house, they watch YouTube occasionally uh it's pretty cool folks if you haven't tried it out if you have a player of any deal in terms of if you have any type of a streaming stick uh an amazon fire stick whatever you use to stream onto your television you can go right to youtube search tfnn pull up our live stream during the day you can be watching all the hosts live on your television through that i watch it myself throughout the day uh if i'm around the house and I have the TV on. You just throw on the YouTube app, pull up TFNN. You got all your favorite hosts there live on your television. So people use it immensely. Uh, Multi-year agreement with Google to keep YouTube and YouTube TV on its streaming platform. Now, YouTube TV, even even bigger one, right, in terms of people paying for that deal. Um, yeah, Google had previously threatened to pull both YouTube and YouTube TV off tomorrow, December 9th. Uh, caught the attention of Congress, attempting to rein in the power of big tech companies like Google, but they've done a deal nonetheless that marches on, and the market really liking it for Roku. Uh, Google, I looked at earlier, not up too much. You're up about two tenths percent. Not sure really that has to do with um, that big of a deal in terms of for uh, their deal with Roku. All right, what else we have going on? Going to jump back to the Fed decision and focus on that. Now, uh, where are we? That's not it. That's not it as well. Give me one second, folks. What did I do? I somehow lost what I had here, did I? All right, I'm going to pull it up. I had an opinion piece from Bill Dudley talking about next week. No, I got to find this. It's here somewhere. Is it not? I can't believe I closed that down. All right, I'll find it. One moment as I pull this up, folks, because this one's too important. I want to talk about it. Here we go. All right, I found it again just that quick. So the next Fed meeting will offer more surprises. Now, full disclosure here, okay, in terms of Bill Dudley, he thinks that the Fed has to uh, taper much quicker. He's a former Fed official from New York. He believes his opinion is, is not hidden, as in I'm going to pull up what he was writing a week ago, okay, the Federal Reserve needs to act on Powell's words. If central bankers don't accelerate the taper at their policy meeting in two weeks, it'll be too late. OK, he's putting this messaging out there because that's what he believes. But you got to be aware that it's possible. The Fed's got a meeting coming up December 14th and 15th. That's next week. That's next week, folks. Uh, that's Wednesday. Excuse me. Let's make sure. Tuesday and Wednesday. Yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday of next week. Beyond the taper, the long-term outlook for interest rates might come as a shock to markets. Now, he's out there saying that at their policy meeting next week, now he's trying to introduce the idea, though, to make it happen, okay? But you have to realize it's possible, folks, because Chairman Powell, I was actually pretty exacerbated that he was so strong in talking about retiring transitory when he had been talking about transitory forever. Uh in light of the context of the stimulus and where rates are, okay, you have to recognize the importance, excuse me, of a statement like that and the implications it could have on their plan to taper and uh, raise rates potentially faster than the market was uh, anticipating. Now, the aim is now to complete the program in time to be able to start raising short-term interest rates as soon as March, should that prove to be necessary. But the taper isn't all that will be on the agenda at next week's meeting. This is Bill Dudley talking. Again, opinion piece, not news, opinion, but it's an important opinion. And you better believe that there's a certain probability, folks, that this could happen. And I'm not sure the market is pricing in the probability that this could happen a lot quicker than they were thinking. 
Fed officials are likely to signal a faster and larger tightening of monetary policy over the next three years to an extent that markets have not yet anticipated. Okay, this is Bill Dudley. This is his opinion. We'll see if it plays out, but we only have one week, folks. The last time the Fed officials published economic projections in September, talk about a long time ago, they expected inflation to fall back close to the Fed's 2% tar target, even as employment pushed past the levels consistent with price stability. That was a long time ago, folks. And the Fed, they're not thinking that anymore. Their median projection for the central bank short-term target rate at the end of 2024 was 1.8%, well below the 2.5% level most judged as neutral. This time around, uh, the broad contours of the economic outlook will probably be similar. The median forecast for next year will show above trend growth, pushing unemployment below 4%. The biggest change will be in the interest rate policy officials deem necessary to achieve the economic outcome. Last time, the median projection for the Fed's short-term interest rate target at the year end was 0.3% for 2022, 1% for 2023, and 1.8% for 2024. This time, the upward path will start sooner, steeper, and rise higher. For 2022, he's looking for 0.8%. That's 3% quarter percentage point increases next year and for 2023 he expects officials to project four more rate hikes taking the median target of 1.8 percent a year earlier than when the market was thinking just three months ago for 2024 2.5 percent uh, judged as neutral. One can make the case that the 2024 interest rate projection should go beyond neutral. I would almost argue that folks. Um, you know, we'll find out on Friday, and, and Friday is going to matter in terms of what matters next week. But be aware, if Friday is a hot number for inflation, that's going to put a lot of pressure on this Fed meeting coming up next week. Uh, the shift in the Fed's interest rate projections might come as a shock to markets, is as he puts it. I, I kind of I, I agree with that, as in I agree that right now this market is trading like everything is perfect. And when you're trading like everything's perfect, we saw what can happen when you get a few scares of the variant. That's not what the market really should be worrying about, in my opinion, folks. As traders, as investors, you should be focusing on the taper because over the next year, things are going to change dramatically. As asset purchases go away and interest rates rise at a level we haven't seen in a while. And we're going to see how that plays out. Now, I'm going to throw a little bit of fire uh, fuel on that fire even more. I told you I had a couple of tweets coming out from our man Carl Quintanilla. Quintanilla? Uh, not familiar with him, but he puts out some good stuff on Twitter, folks. I'll give him a nod. Look him up on Twitter. This one he was talking about. Is this the tweet I took from it? No, okay. Uh, but the, he was tweeting this out, talking about data track research. Uh, consumers having a little bit less cash maybe than they had previously, which is the reason why credit card balances are rising at a healthy clip once again. Really remarkable how these went in terms of people stopped spending money. March of 2020, 862 billion was the peak for consumer loans, credit cards, and other revolving plans and from all commercial banks. We reach a low in February of 2021, but since then we're on the rise. Consumers might not have as much cash as they had previously. That's something to keep your eye on as we have rising rates. Stay tuned, folks. We're coming back with Teddy Kegstat talking some Are forks. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com that's 727-329-8322 call us today the technology around us is changing every day with so much happening it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information 
David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have stocks pretty much flat right now. The Dow up about 40 points. S&P's up by four. And NASDAQ, the only major index in the red, by about one-tenth percent right now. And the Russell, though, charging higher, up 2.2% uh, in a big way at 2253. Let's jump over to our man, Teddy Kegstad, folks. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. We talk to Teddy every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. He talks to us about Forex. He talks to us about some commodities. Teddy Kegstad, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. We got a lot to talk about today in front of this Fed meeting next week. I like it, man. It seems like every week, Teddy, man, we got some big action going on, whether it's crude, whether it's currencies. Uh, and of course, with the Fed action going on, we got interest rates, 10 year yield sitting at about 1.5%. Um, I'm not sure if you were listening in the last segment, just talking about Bill Dudley out there with an opinion piece making the case that they might be having to hike a little bit case uh, faster than the market might be anticipating. Be interesting, uh, we got a CPI number coming out Friday, mm -hmm. a Fed meeting, as you said, next week. Uh, go ahead, where are we gonna start, man? Okay, well, how about we do a little run around the world? I got some price targets and things for you guys, and then we'll, we'll break it down for you after that. How about I love that, it, okay? let's do it. Perfect. All right, so starting out, Euro, US dollar, okay? For those of you who follow my site, we stream, you know, videos and also signals. We had the Euro US dollar just hit this morning, the 113.11 target. Now that's a key little area now. We're coming off a higher move low, swing low. So there's a good chance that the Euro right now is in a nice little corrective phase and it's gonna make a run for that last major swing high around 113.80. I think that's about all you're gonna see right now. I think that between now and next Wednesday, you're gonna see a lot of divergence between the currencies versus the dollar. So a little strength in the Euro, weakness in the pound, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, okay. 11438, I think, is your up extreme for any rally in the Euro US dollar up until next Wednesday. Okay, because nice. we'll get to it, we'll wrap it up when I when after I finish this, okay? I'm US dollar with Swiss the charts. Perfect. It's totally for it. choppy. It's a choppy mess unless you're already in it. I would work a position. Otherwise, I would look to buy dips. I think that that's your best opportunity. But it's it's a nightmare until things get under control until next week. OK, now, unless there's a big rally in oil and a big sell off in the interest rates, then I would say get become a buyer for sure. But otherwise, stay out of that one for until you get a valid signal. British pound U.S. dollar is weak right now. It's it just made a lower move low today while the euro is higher. Yeah. So that's why the, that's why the dollar index right now you are not going to be able to use that as a good guide until after next Wednesday. You got the two strong currencies going the other way. You know what I mean? So yes. the pound 
it's a grinding bear. I would use caution if I would, if you're short. I keep your stops tight. If you're looking to buy, I'd wait for a valid signal because don't try and catch a falling knife right now. There's a lot of geopolitical things that are also weighing on on the UK. Now let's get to our favorite one to talk about: the U.S. dollar, Japanese yen. Um, which I'm long actually and have been for a long time. You all know that one. Uh, 116 is back on the target right now with the oil where it's at, interest rates are coming off the Omicron, blah, blah, you know, scare. I think that you're going to see like a balloon underwater rally with the U.S. dollar yen over the next uh, week or so. And that's regardless of what goes on with the Fed going into next week. Okay. Australian dollar, okay. U.S. dollar, nice little lift right now, getting a nice little bounce. I'd be cautious being a bull. I think it's an upside correction right now, especially with the strength in oil. But we all know what's going on in Australia. It's not yeah. good for global economy. OK, New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar, which tends to go along with the Australian, but it's kind of just in a free float, is had a nice little three inside up buy signal. It's a high probable Japanese candlestick pattern, which you can learn about in my book if you read it. <laughs> uh, I like those candlesticks. Perfect. <laughs> And it, but it has a good upside target of about 0.6849. I think that's where you're going to run into some heavy um, selling, but it could still get up to 0.69 even. I think that's about the extreme for a correction in the New Zealand dollar, U.S. dollar. So one more, and then we'll get into the, the back with backbones and stuff. U.S. dollar Canada, bring us back to North America, is back on the skids. Remember, it's in an overall bear market. It's been in an upside correction for the past, like, four months bobbling around, I would use caution being a bull with that market right now, especially with interest rates going the way they're going and oil going the way that it's going. It's going to be a tug of war with that currency. Right now, I have a downside target of $1.2549 with $1.2470 being a very easy extreme sell-off target in the short run. So, um, and that's where I see things right now with these signals and with those the direction that I just gave you. That's a lot of divergence. Like I said, we had the euro that's strong against the dollar, pounds weak, Swiss is in nowheresville. So Europe is, in a, is a mixed bag of goods. The same thing is with Asia. You have the dollar strong against the yen, dollars weak against Australia, which right now you would think, how is that possible? But that's what just what is going on in the markets right now. Sure. Well, I love the wrap up, man. You do a great job of walking us around that whole globe. Um, now crude, we have to talk about if we can real quick. Uh, yes quite the volatility. I, I was looking at waiting for you to come on today, and I said, where were we last week when we talked? Um, crazy action when you just even back it up to last week. We're at about 68 mm -hmm. bucks. We trade down to 72, and we got a, uh, excuse me, 62, and then we get a 73 right. handle. Um, you know, we, I, I, we kind of know where you've been on this one, but mm -hmm. what do you look for in crude right now at $72 in the near term, even if you're talking about $100 in the longer term? <laughs> Oh, I think it's going to hold. I absolutely think it's going to hold. I, I don't see oil. I think what we had over the holidays was that little Omicron sell-off. Remember, yeah. remember when we talked on Wednesday two weeks ago when I was out in Arkansas? I said, be careful of holiday markets. They're thin. The algos will kick in and drive it crazy. I think we had that's what happened with the oil market on, on that Friday when it collapsed. You know, I mean, yeah. we had a ten dollar ten dollar break in oil with no news in the world that would substantiate having that happen, you know? So, and it took a, last week to kind of absorb that correction and it's got to bounce. I mean, now it's like a balloon underwater. I don't think that oil has any way of getting suppressed right now, especially like I look at how the, the, the prices at the pump have been. They're, they're only going up in the midst of having that big break. And I was traveling I through know. the Midwest, you know? So if the, if the gas prices aren't taking a dent and they're going to make high, they're going up, that's just an indicator right there. Yeah, you know, I, I have to tell you, because the people in my house, right, I was telling them, hey, crude, crude just went down a lot. You know, the gas might go down. This mm -hmm. is right before Thanksgiving. And uh, and they were saying, well, I always like to buy gas right before the holidays because they never go down. I said, you're not listening to me. All right. Crude's going <laughs> down. It's going to go down. And and mm -hmm. guess what? I, w I was not right on that one, Teddy, because they never went down, man, even with crude going to 62 right. bucks. I, I agree. Right. I was kind of I just kind of threw up my hands and said, hey, what do you want me to say? I know they're not lowering the prices, but uh, right. yeah, higher prices for sure. Um, mm -hmm. And then so. Could we real quick, Teddy, with the with the Fed, where do you see the sure. Fed next week with what's going on? We got about a minute left. Sure. Well, you know what? The Fed a, a week ago finally said, oh, inflation is not going Oof. away. Something know, we've been right? talking about for the whole year, you know, and there always is a lag with their speak. It's just like a used car salesman or a real estate agent. The market is always fantastic. It's never bad, you know. Yes. So right. now they cannot deny it. And now they have to pull the trigger. But since you're no longer in denial, what are you going to do? 
you can't do what you've been doing now beforehand when you said inflation wasn't a problem, it's normal, oh, it's just a spike. Now you say that inflation isn't going anywhere, which means that it is here and it's staying, but well, what are you gonna do, you know? So I think that they're gonna probably, you know that tapering is on the table, and as far as I agree with the, with your uh, the, the person from the last uh, segment, that yeah, there's a really good chance of them starting to raise earlier than uh, later. I think for sure. And I I just think you know whether we know it's going to happen or not, man, it's not priced in when the market's sitting at all time no. highs. We got inflation soaring, no. and the Fed chairman's telling us, hey, we were wrong. Right. Inflation's here, man. Teddy, right. we they appreciate pull the, the trigger. I listen. I I look forward to talking to you next week, man. We'll find out. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Teddy. Have a great week, man. We'll talk to you next week. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year, or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested, or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps up by five points right now. Tech stocks slightly in the red. We got the Nasdaq 100 negative by just 18 points. Dow up 28. Russell up by nine. I think I had a wrong print right there when I was talking about the Russell. Um, did I? Yeah, I did. I'm not sure why I pulled that up. It was telling me that the Russell was positive by two point something percent. That was wrong data. You get the Russell right now up by about four tenths percent. Let me see. Those are futures too. Let me see the cash. Cash, you're actually talking about maybe down. Uh, is that right? Russell, maybe down about two tenths percent. Nonetheless, uh, yes, that's the action this morning. Okay, excuse me. Let me put it back on the daily. 
There's the daily. So Russell barely positive on the futures. That was probably yesterday's action. Nonetheless, right now I have cash. I'm not sure. That's 939. No, that's wrong. Okay, this is what's right. This is what's correct, folks. Russell's positive by half a percent. Had to get it straight myself. Dow positive by 31. NASDAQ negative by two tenths. Let's jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Tesla, not necessarily a FANG stock, but I like to check them out. They're negative by about half a percent today. You have Amazon shares negative by two tenths. Apple making new all time highs yet again. Seems to be the trend lately, up three quarters of a percent at 172. I talked about it before, somewhere around 183 or 184. Apple would become the first three trillion dollar company. Remarkable. Uh, Microsoft down three quarters percent and Google on the heels of their deal with Roku flat right now on the session. Uh, and I'm going to jump, jump over to DocuSign up three point eight percent today. Uh, DocuSign. Where are we? Insiders. Yeah, there we go. You had the uh, president and CEO buying $4.8 million worth of the shares. First time you had insiders buying DocuSign, I think it said maybe since it went public back in almost 2018. Always encouraging when you see that. It uh, doesn't necessarily mean everything because it's kind of a game theory perspective, right? Pretty cool when you know if you're president and CEO, if you buy something, it might give it a lift. Uh, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy in some degree, but something to keep your eye on. Maybe that's kind of a lower area that even the president and CEO finds attractive at the price of 144 DocuSign up 3.8% today. S&P is positive by one. Stay tuned, folks. We got our man Basil Chapman live with the Tiger Technician Tower coming up at 10. We got our man Larry Pesvento live at 11. Fast Market at 12. You heard them. They'll be talking about Lululemon. They'll be talking about Restoration Hardware. Maybe talking some Roku. Steve Rhodes at one. Dave White at two. Tom O'Brien. My dad live at three o'clock. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.